Um, anyway, it's dead. So let's show you, lad, I'll show you several mounting options within this. It's got a bolt hole you can put a bolt or a connector. And we've got these um, XL Cat 6A connectors. There's the new Wi Fi router. A good afternoon to you from a sunny Anglesey. Right, so we've uh, got a, a few problems with the Starlink that we uh, put up a few weeks ago now. Um, it stopped working, simple as that. Um, we've um, done a few tests, it looks like the actual dish itself is dead. I've spoke to Starlink themselves, obviously they've given me no warranty on it because we've cutched open, but they've, um, they've sent us a replacement anyway. So I don't know if it's a problem because the, the lead had burnt out when it goes into the router. So I'm not, not really sure why that is, but um, it's obviously a problem they've had previously at some point. So obviously they've taken charge of it and sent me a whole new stall link out free of charge. So I'm going to take the old flat mount off the roof now and I decided on a different configuration. Sorry about that, there's a big massive bee just flying right by me. Here is said roof mounted stalling on the ground so not sure what's happened to it all this is still as it was uh, all the connections are all still fine I've checked them out they're still fine on the connection so really not sure what happened to it there's a bit of a bugger to remove so it's the second time I've put it on because I've had it on and off a couple of times. I just put it on these little blobs here, so these little cutouts. I put it on with them. So, anyway, it's dead. So let's see what lot I'll show you what we've done now for the time being. So we're still here. So we've prepared the roof now, just got to do a little bit more cleaning of it. And I've had a bit of a change this time. Still didn't use the cable up to here, as we did before. But below, and on here, I'm going to leave the motorised dish as it was, so intact. And the 12 volt, still going to be the same, still same setup for the 12 volt. But we're going to leave the dish with its leg on. And what I'm going to use is something called the star mount kit. Oh. Yeah, storm mount kit. So I'll, I'll go get that out of the box now. I'll bring it up, I'll show you what it is and what we can do with it. So just hang on there for a second. So we've got this uh, box here. This is from Storm Mount. Yeah, this is a stainless steel and white dish mount. And it's instructions for it. British made if you, in the UK. But right way up. So basically, it's got several mounting options within this. It's got a bolt hole you can put a bolt or a padlock through your stall and field to keep it on your roof or wherever permanently. It's not just for roofs, it's for anywhere. Um, so you can put it in permanently. More technology. Yeah, I've bought the. Um, camera. Yeah, I'm doing a vlogger. Yeah. Oh, right. So this is for. The storm mount cap this goes in here and that makes it waterproof yeah just doing a vlog <laughs> yeah so this uh this is the waterproof cap that comes with it well it doesn't come with it it's an extra but that your connection goes straight into there as you can see look that's the stalling proprietary connection that goes in there and that goes back in the top of there and that stays in then and then when you're not using it, you just take it out and put it somewhere safe, I suppose. Just put that somewhere safe. But the main thing about this is that, obviously, the footprint of it's really small. And it does say, it's what the main reason was, you can just use a good quality seal, like a uh, Sigflex, uh, what's this one we've got here, 522. 
So we're just going to bond this on the 522 today. I'm going to alter the wiring into the box here. So I've put another little box on here now. I'm going to alter the wiring into this box and then it'll go straight back down to where it was before. And then I've got another addition that I'll show you once I've done this. So I'll just show you what we've got here in a minute. So to save any bother with wiring and stuff, so I've kept the same um, terminal here and put a gland box here. So we can put another gland nut in here and then this a uh, shielded connector, shielded plug and then we'll go straight out of here into the Starlink proprietary connector. So it's quite straightforward really, I think if you've done one it's going to be straightforward to you anyway. But it, you know, it does tell you it's um, stainless steel and it's um, powder coated. Um, and it just says mechanical options and it says you can obviously the dish mount base is sufficient service area for securing with suitable adhesive of preferred mechanical attachment if not possible such a fitted GRP fiberglass surface. So obviously motor and roof is GRP so say drilling any hole suit, just bond it on and away you go. That'll be good enough for hold the stalling in place. So I'm going to get the stalling count now and set it up so it's in its normal position and then I can decide where I'm going to put this on the roof. So this is the position of uh, decided for the star mount. So there's my you know, outlet to the cable. So you can come round here, so I've got a little bit of cable there. You can join back in this box, then come back up through the back of the star mount and up. So I'm just going to put a bit of silicon or 522 Sikaflex around these holes here, just to fill them up. And that's about it then. So I'll just do that and I'll bring you back to show you what I've done. So this is it really, that's the star mount fitted. As you can see I've just filled these holes up to the top with silicon. Or 522 Sikaflex. I'll clean them off with a bit of a uh, multi-sol after it'll stop uh, any build up. So I'm just need to give that a bit of a clean where the one's been still. So I'll go down now and show you the other bits and bobs. I'm just going to put some wires in here but you don't need to watch me do that. You've seen me do that before. So I'll get that done now and I'll be back with you in a minute. So as you can see this is the storm out fitting now. I'm just going to tidy up these. It's a little bit of silicon on it. It's a bit a bit mucky. This is the connection box, so this is X swap cables. I'll put some tabs on them to remind me. It's a later date if need be. There's your clan nuts in. That's sealed in there, that's sealed in there. Um, a bit of silicon there, we'll just cover that. I'll, I'll put a new tab on there because I snapped it off just a minute ago, so we have to sort that out. So that's it then. So, storm out's there. I mean, really, if you don't want to put this here, you can put storm out straight over it. Seal the wire in underneath this where it comes through, drill a slightly bigger hole. Then you wouldn't have to cut the cables, nothing, you wouldn't have to do any joins, any crossing of wires, any connectors. That might be easy for some who don't want to mess about with wiring and such, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just an RJ45 connector with a couple of the cables swapped inside it. Um, other than that, like I say, so that's not done now, that'll let that go overnight. I'm going to sort the other scenario out because I've got two scenarios for this now. I've got one up here. If we're on site for a few days, I'll pop it to the top. If not, I've got an old aerial connection there, an old Max Viewpoint. My Max View aerial used to be here, so I took it off because we didn't use the TV. So I've run a cable down there, an RJ45. I bought an RJ45 box for it. And then, so I can have a cable there and then just put a splitter at the top, I can either have one plug in or the other plug in. So I'll show you when I do that now. Right, so this is the old Maxview aerial, so I, before just trying this, I've just um, put an RG45 through with the, um, the Starlink, and that goes into the other side of the Starlink on the cable. And we just tried that, and it worked out pretty well. So. What I'm thinking is, when we're on 12 volts, we don't want to get up and put it on the roof if we're just stopping somewhere for an hour or something. Just 
quick park up and pop stall and get up and need it. Just popped into the max view here, so getting the lads out and getting up on the roof. Just swap the cable over, boot it up, and it's done. So I bought a new fitting for it. I'm not sure if, if you can get them anymore, it took me ages to try and find this one. This is a, um, a B215 RJ5 and coaxial connector. So as you can see that it's got the RJ45 on it coming out and a coax. So, let's have a look on the box. So that's it, it's just a normal max view. The back's got an RJ45 there. Some Cat5 cable is it? And then inside here. Yeah, so inside there's a normal RJ45 connector there. So we'll use that now. We won't bother with the aerial one because we don't need it. And then we'll stick this back on the van. And hopefully that'll be all good then. Right. I'll do this and I'll bring you back in two minutes when I've just got some bits and bobs done. So what we're going to take the old one off now. I've put the new sticky pad on that comes with it onto it so that'll stop any water ingress. And the holes match up anyway. I've just altered the max view slightly because we don't need the aerial lead so I've chopped that off anyway. We don't need that so that's redundant. And then I'm just going to blob some uh, um, CT1 inside there now, some inside the holes, some inside this hole here just to doubly make sure and then we'll stick them on and then we've just got to connect the wires inside. So that's it then, so this is uh, fixed in place now. You've got your aerial thing that's not been used there and your RG45 there. Your ceiling pad that's sealing it nicely. Um, just a bit squirted out so I'll just clean it off, there's the old one. Discolored obviously because of the age. So that was the two aerials, so that could be modified to have an RJ45, and so I might keep that modified and then sell it on because you can get a new front for it, and the fronts are all the same. So that's discolored, so you could get a front or you could just clean it up maybe with a oh, cleaners plastic swap uh, heat, heat gun maybe. And that could be used again then for another one. Just Silicon round it, we'll get another pad. If you can't get this exact one, or the new one. Spot on. Right, we'll go and wire it up now. So, this is what I've done. This is the Cat5 cable. It should be Cat6 really because it's shielded, but we'll, we'll see how we go with it. So it's Cat5. If I need to change it, I'll put a piece of Cat6 shielded through, but I'm sure for the speeds I'll need it for when I'm using this, it'll be okay. Um, then, this is the Connects. We've got, got a VC link um, connector, and we've got these um, XL Cat 6A connectors as well. So they're shielded connectors, shielded thing, but this cable's not shielded, so hopefully it'll be okay. If not, then I will let you know. But it should be okay with just non-shielded for what I need it for anyway. I'm not looking for high speed for that connection. Really, that's just a if we should need it connection. The other one's the main connection for on the roof. Right, so this part's sorting now, so I'm gonna give this a quick try now with the star link and let's see how it performs. So this is the star link, what we've done up to now. It goes in there now. I did have to take it out and put a uh, RG45 Cat5 shielded connection and it just wouldn't work kept losing connection so that's the shortened cable to Starlink and that's a crossover connection there from Starlink connector to RG45 weatherproofed so this now we can move this wherever we want and then the other one is on the roof up there you can see it maybe from here but I'll show you more tomorrow once it's dried I'll get it there tomorrow hopefully if it's dry we'll um, we'll um, Try the stalling up there, try the network cables and stuff that I've done for up there, and hopefully, we'll get just a good results there. So, let me just have a quick check of the speeds at the minute between oh, 10.2 megabits per second upload and 27 milliseconds 
latency on the ping. So all in all, pretty good. You know, it's got a shortened cable now, so it's, that's good to help. I'll tidy all this up and I'll go through the components again with you on the next video, or later on this video, should I say. So, at the minute, the little routers there, router, uh, the old Wi-Fi ones there, and then you'll see the other PoE injector behind this toast tomorrow. So we have two separate ones, one for downstairs, one for upstairs, just to make it just simpler for me. It's not simple for everybody, but for me, that's the way I'm going to go with it. So I'll show you that tomorrow. So on the next part of this video, you'll see that. So that's coming up now. So it's the next day. Uh, we've just been to take Max to have a haircut. So he's nice and shaved now. He's look stuff out again through the store link. I'm making a curry. She was making curry. So here's where we're up to. So there's the new Wi-Fi router. And I bought this because it does both the Starlink and the EE Mobile. So if we haven't got one, we've got the other. And it's just one unit, so it's just less things to go wrong. And then we've got... This is the PoE injector. At the bottom, that's where the WAN cable comes out. So that's the one out of the... The PoE straight into the router, router, and then at the bottom there you've got the Starlink cable. So that's the Starlink cable here. This is the one for the side of the van. That's that one, and this one here is for the roof. So I'm just going to label these up now, and then we'll uh, we'll give it a try. Then see how we're going because that's all up and running now. We're getting good speeds on the. Um, Starlink at the minute, so that's just the on-off switch for the Starlink, so we can isolate the Starlink separately. This is battery operated, so that, that'll be a backup anyway on that with the backup battery. So we'll um, we'll do a few tests right now. I'll show you what I've done on the roof again in a minute, just so you, when the dish is up there, you can see exactly what's going on. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. It is up there. Look. I'll just take you up of this step. So, what have we got? There's the star mount here. That's stuck to the roof. That's in there. Cable's in there. That's it, job done. That's tight on there. And that's it. So you've got your junction box there so I can quickly get to fittings. Got your sealed box there. It goes down with your wire. You know, should you need to do anything, this will come off easy enough. And you've got your star link here, on top of the roof. No cutting, no nothing. So it's just as it would be, standard installation, but on a roof. So, what do you think about that one? Looks okay, I think. Really. This is up there, doing its own thing, isn't it? Out the way. Nice small footprint. And we've just got this one here at the side. So I'll just take this plug out of here and then that can close up. And then that's for the side one when we've got a... Uh, this one we just shut down and um, a quick stopover. Right, so I'll, I'll pack this all up now and I'll... Um, I'll, I'll get on to, I'll just pack my tools up. I'm going to have a spot of tea now, anyway. And then I'll get on and I'll let you know exactly what we've done and where you can get all the bits from. Okay, see you in a bit. So these are the cables. So this one now, as you can see, put standard, so it's a standard um, fitting for the Starlink. And that's a standard side entry, so now that's the side of the van. And this one is the X swap cable so I know all the cables on this are X swapped. This is actual Starlink end cable. I know this is the roof mount so I'll put on here roof mount. Well it's a couple of weeks later now since I recorded the video and the Starlink is working absolutely perfect. We've had no issues with it since we uh, put it back on. Um, I did make a few more amendments so I'll just show you them now. So 
on the roof you can see I got rid of the junction box and just used a sealed connector it's just uh, just less wise less things to go wrong less connections so that's there um, this is this box still so you can't see it very well now though because it's all uh, full of stuff but yeah it's all still the same behind there um, still the same on the side of the van as well. I'll just put the roof down there for it's got rain on us. Around this beautiful British weather again, yeah, where it's raining. So we'll just stick that down. Oh, there we go. Oh, so there you go. Right. Yeah, so um, it's been on the roof now for a few weeks, as I just said. And it's been absolutely fine. Um, we've not had to take it off because we're still on site from a couple of weeks ago, but. Uh, we have been away with it and we had it out of the side of the van. We had it on top of the van. We've got really good speeds. Obviously, it still finds all its own position as it needs to with it being actuated. Um, probably down about 70 80 watts in power it's using from the 240, so that's pretty good. Uh, I haven't got the exact stats, but it's I figured it out really by what other people have used and what they've got and looked at what we've been using and when I've plugged it in from the 12 volts into the power bank it shows you the draw and how many watts it's drawing compared to when it's plugged into its main router on the 240 so yeah it's good obviously it's um it's a much easier configuration if you're going to do it the second way that is and you've got no risk of blowing it up either like we did with the first one that first one is dead but let's say really good a star link to um, send us another one out free of charge. We've been told a bit, uh, obviously the cable had gone a bit dodgy within the connection for the router, router, whatever you want to call it. So that that's where it had gone wrong. So I don't know if that give a spike to the dish or what happened to be honest in that um, situation. They couldn't really tell me, but the old dish is going back to them for them to look at. Don't know what they're going to say about having the back cut out of it, but hey, that's another story. <laughs> so, um, in the video, I will get a list of all the items I used um, from the little leads that we connect, like little patch leads that patch onto the dish, and the patch lead that this that patches on from um, not the dish, yeah, the dish, yeah, on the dish. Two of the dish ones because I've got one for the dish down and one when it's on the dish up, so I've got two different uh, leads. So I keep them both separate for that reason, so it just makes it easier. So one's in the box in the back for the side of the van with the normal mounting leg, and the other one's will just down the roof into the star mount. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put the uh, link on for all the different bits I've used differently on this one, and obviously the, the new router that's proven to be really good because even if the star link wasn't up say we're somewhere else or just driving and we haven't got the star link on we'll get good wi-fi speeds off that then as soon as you put star link on you get good wi double the wi-fi speeds because you can um double it if you want to with that router um if you want to see more about that then i'll um give me a, a shout and i'll do a video on the router as well just so you can um, have some ideas of the setups etc okay well thank you for watching please like subscribe to the channel we've got more stuff coming soon and we'll see you on the next one